So anyways, there I was, pinned down between two Amazonian babes with two broken legs. Luckily, my third one was still fully operational and... Hold up. I know I didn't just see the green fucking goblin back there. Take me to it, Thrall. Hey. Oh, holy shit, Courier. That's not any green goblin. That's the green gobbler herself. You don't know who Veronica is? Well, sit back and stare deeply into her player model as I weave you a tale of tragedy and heartbreak. On the surface, she may look like she is going to hop on a green glider and throw bombs at Spider-Man, but there is more than what greets the eye. She is a member of the Brotherhood of Steel. You don't know about them yet, Courier? Oh, come on, you are telling me you didn't check those bunkers by the NCR Correctional Facility? By the Divines, you never cease to amaze me with your laziness and weird actions. Well, they are a cult of heavily armed tin cans whose sole goal is to take technology from everyone else and hoard it for themselves. Anyways, she was born into them like any member after the war. Her parents died rather early into her childhood during a particularly depraved skirmish with the NCR that resulted in a budding war between the two factions. Their leader, Father Elijah, took over her parental and educational roles as she grew up. Yes, Courier, that Father Elijah that we locked in a vault to starve with his worthless gold. Yet from a young age, even without his guidance, she was naturally talented with the mechanical machinations of machine. This led to her becoming a scribe, one of the highest ranking and best among them. But Elijah's disdain and many shouting matches with the Brotherhood Council over her formative years instilled in her a natural desire to question their motives and actions. This disdain would soon become her own when she had found herself developing love for another member of the Brotherhood, Christine Royce. Typically, homosexuality was not something the Brotherhood was for or against, but their limited numbers meant every member was required to copulate with another and produce offspring. Elijah would split them apart under the guise of Christine's parents and send Christine away into a different chapter of the Brotherhood. Veronica had her own choice to make after leave her family for love or abandon love for her family. She chose to stay and would go with Father Elijah to Hoover Dam. The council had tried to rid themselves of Elijah by sending him and a large detachment to set up base in Hoover Dam, but Elijah had secret plans to start a new chapter that he didn't reveal to anyone else. Yet both these things would not fully come to fruition as Elijah was drawn to Helios I before he ever even made it to the dam. Setting up shop there, he would be sending Veronica on many top-secret excursions looking for specific pieces of old-world technology that he wouldn't even explain the need of to her. During this time, it not only allowed her to learn more about Elijah, but the NCR had an opportunity and took Hoover Dam, sending Elijah into a bloodthirsty rage. She learned of his desire not use the dam, but for the sheer power it would give him over the Mojave and rest of the Brotherhood. She watched firsthand when he started a guerrilla war against the NCR over Hoover Dam, and she had to witness her family being torn apart day in and day out until there was barely half of them left to fight. The new elder of the Brotherhood, Elder McNamara, had to put them into a lockdown so the NCR would not be able to find and fully eradicate them. During this time, Veronica would grow restless and would openly critique the Brotherhood's actions and question many of them. This combined with her veteran status from Helios made her out to be a fierce threat. In an effort to keep her away from high command, they moved her from scribe to procurement specialist, allowing her to make trips topside of their bunker. This would prove worse than they could imagine, though, as she was exposed to many perspectives and ideals. She didn't let that distract her from the true goal of her missions, though. It was simply to bide time and keep her away from the Elder or other members with her questions and leadership. This would make her blood boil as she would have a harder time talking to her family, who mostly agreed with her outside of Brotherhood politics. This combined with the lessons she was learning from her repeated travels made her realize the Brotherhood didn't have long to stay around at this trajectory. The NCR already had a nation and an army while the Brotherhood was till a bunch of selfish tin cans in a hole underground. She desperately wanted them to change to what they aspired to be, helping the people of the wasteland instead of serving itself. This was only made worse by a letter from Father Elijah. His writing indicated he had clearly gone insane as he penned about a solution to save the Brotherhood. Yet even through his malformed gibberish, his signature tone spoke through the letter and kept her hope alive the Brotherhood could still be saved without needing a clean slate. This was still difficult to achieve, though, as she could only go on supply runs and watch her family and friends die around her. And with less people to hold their arms in defense, this issue would only be exasperated. 
But with all these issues, all this stress and constant concern, one of a few thoughts kept her sane, that maybe one day she will be able to wear a gorgeous dress and just for a moment forget all her problems. You see, Courier, Veronica is not just a homeless green goblin. She is also a great companion. With a carry weight of 220 pounds and the ability to teach you a new melee move, she is pretty useful. She also gives you the scribe's assistant perk, which makes her into a mobile workbench, but EDA can do the same thing with the Lonesome Road DLC. She does pretty good with heavy armor and melee weapons, so she can certainly pack a punch. How would I rate her as a companion? Hmm. I'll give her a four and a half ash yams out of five. This puppy right here can take you some places. I'm a god. How can you kill a god? What a grand and intoxicating innocence.